Hi guys, my name is Veronica and um, I asked a couple of you on the TSW Facebook page if you guys wanted to see a uh, makeup product recommendation list of what I use and what's worked well for me and a couple of you have said um, you guys would be interested so I thought instead of writing out an essay and then setting it to you all individually that I would just do a video and just probably link it to you guys. And um, so I'm 22 and I've used um, topical cortisones for 22 years and uh, I've never had any top, uh, steroid shots or taken steroids orally so um, that's really good. But yeah, I've, I've used the steroid cream for 22 years of my life. So that's where I'm at. And I'm currently 11 months into TSW. Um, as you can see, um, oh well, probably not because the video quality is so low because <laughs> I'm filming on my iPad. Um, I, if you see me in real life, I have a little bit of redness and a little bit of elephant skin on um, both of my shoulders. Um, redness on my neck. Um, elephant skin on my hands and I used to have the red sleeve on my hands, both my hands. What I find really funny is that, especially these ones, um, these ones are completely fine but then these two, don't they look a bit funny? Like I think it must be the elephant skin, uh, I'm not too sure but like this one, yeah same with these, like these ones are weird and then there's this one is like which is completely normal. Anyways, just so I would point that out. I don't know if that happens to any of you guys as well, but um, yeah, that, that's what happened. That's what's happening to me right now. Um, and also um, TSW, uh, sorry, elephant skin on the top of my knees. So apart from that, my skin is actually looking okay. Um, it's a little bit of general eczema here and there, but apart from that, um, I'm doing pretty alright. So the makeup products that I'm about to recommend is um, what worked for me. I'm not saying that um, it's good to wear makeup during TSW just because I know that most of you um, are going through moisture withdrawal and um, if you're going through moisture withdrawal it's probably best not to put any makeup on your face just because I know that the foundation will enhance that and it will make it look a little bit more dry than what it is actually is. So um, the first, I'll go in order. Um, so from face, to, well, primer to foundation to um, brow products to um, even eyelash glue to lips and to um, the finishing um, setting spray. Um, I'll go in order of that so it just makes a little bit more sense and it flows a little bit more better. So um, what I really recommend is having a good skincare regime. I went through moisture withdrawal not even that long, like I went through probably about for probably about like 12 days at most. Um, just because it was really painful for me, um, I didn't see any changements, um, improvements. I've asked a couple of people on the page, on the Facebook page, like what when they've seen improvements and some people saw improvements like within the first like three days and that's amazing but it didn't work for me at all. I've waited like 12 days and still didn't work so I thought that I don't even want to go through with this anymore. Um, to be honest, I didn't even go through moisture withdrawal on my face um, at all because on the first day it was already really, really painful. So I just continued on with my normal skincare regime, um, which is just a cleanser, toner, and um, the moisturizer. Um, to be honest, um, I use quite a bit of moisturizer on my face. Like I use probably two serums, um, sunscreen if I'm going out of the house, and then the moisturizer. So, as you can tell, it's a little bit more complex. Um, if you guys would like me to do a skincare regime, um, please let me know. I'll be happy to do one for you. Um, obviously, before 
TSW, um, my skincare regime was different and then it developed into this skincare regime. Um, now I don't experience any flakiness on my face or even redness. I don't know, I don't know if my um, products I've used reduce the redness. To be honest, I don't think it has. Um, I think it just went away naturally. But I, but I do believe that um, the products I used um, did um, help with the flakiness and the dryness and the tightness of my face. So um, that is really good. Um, obviously, makeup's going to come off at the end of the day, so developing good products and um, getting into a good habit of having a good, good skincare regime is really important. And obviously the makeup's going to look a lot nicer if you do have a good skincare regime. So um, the first product that I will be talking about today is the primer. Investing in a good primer is really, really important. Just because, um, just because the primer will help um, with how comfortable the foundation will um, sit on your face, um, it won't let it dry out, um, depending if you want a mattifying primer or a um, hydrating primer. Obviously, um, I chose for the hydrating primer because um, like any TSW person will know that their face is just so dry during TSW, so um, hydrating, hydrating primer is the best for it. Um, I was looking into two primers um, when I was uh, trying to get away from my previous primer, which is the Hourglass, I think it was called the Mineral Veil, Mineral Veil. and that, that, was, that primer was famous for mattifying the face, and at first I didn't know, like, um, at first I didn't know what was happening to my face because it was so tight, it, was, it felt so uncomfortable, um, especially after a long day, I'd... I'd want to just go straight back home and just wash it all off because my face felt so tight. And um, then I realized that it, it was the primer that was a problem. And um, so then I looked into different primers and then I found this one. It's the Too Faced Hangover Primer. And the main ingredient is, I think it's coconut water. And I think that's what makes it so, so comfortable to wear and so hydrating um, for the face. Um, at first, I was actually looking into the um, Marc Jacobs Coconut Water Primer, and that one's a little bit more expensive on the pricier side, um, and a little bit harder to get. Um, I live in Australia, I live in Brisbane, and um, the only way for me to get um, the coconut, the Marc Jacobs, Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer is to drive all the way to the Gold Coast and um, go to Sephora. They recently opened up a Sephora there, and yeah, for me to go get it is just me to drive it to our, an hour there and an hour back just to get this one product, and I didn't think that was very practical, um, so I thought that um, since this one, I can get it from any Mecca in um, Brisbane, I can get it from the city, I can, I can get it from um, the shopping centres, so I thought this one would be a little bit more practical and um, a little bit cheaper in my opinion. And it works just as well. I haven't tried the Marc Jacobs one, but I think it will work just a, just as well because I know that um, a couple of YouTubers have tried it and um, says it's a dupe for it. Um, yeah, so that one's really good. Um, it works really well for me. So um, next I'll be moving on to foundation. Um, I use the NARS Sheer Glow um, foundation. I don't have it with me right now just because I, I ran out of it and I need to go get a new one. So that one's really, really good. It has very good coverage. It feels really comfortable on the skin and um, the fragrance, even though it has a little bit of fragrance, it doesn't, it doesn't um, irritate me at all. So um, the, these ones, that I, the ones that I'm showing you right now are the ones that I'm using currently. And um, it's the L'Oreal Lumi Magique Foundation and also the Maybelline Fit Me. And this one's in the Dewy and Smooth. Make sure it's in the Dewy and Smooth because I know there's a Matt and Paulus one. And I, even though I've never tried that one, um, I, can always, I can just imagine it being matte and tight and just uncomfortable basically. And it even says here that it's for normal to dry skin, so yeah, and I think that one, the matte and flawless is to normal to oily or something like that. 
And so, um, I think they both... This one, the L'Oreal one doesn't have flashback because it doesn't have SPF. Oh wait, no, it does. Okay. Anyways, they do, but it's very, very small. It's SPF 18, so it barely has any flashback. So if you're going out for evening times and you need to take um, this flash photography, then it won't flashback as much as what, it, what like some other foundations have. So in order to apply that, um, I use the... Um, it's like it's it's like the equivalent to a beauty blender. I use the Chi Chi beauty blender, and um, I used to use makeup brushes, but um, mm -hmm. recently um, recently I've really enjoyed beauty blenders just because of the fact that I'd have to wet it and um, then sponge it on, and that adds an extra bit of moisture to the face. And it's really comfortable to apply on. Um, I actually used to use makeup brushes, and um, when I went through uh, when the first months of TSW, I still continue to use makeup brushes. And um, I think the bristles, if the brush isn't soft enough, soft enough, then it sort of irritates the face and it creates a little bit more redness. So I wouldn't. I, I would recommend using a beauty blender rather than a brush um, if you're going through the first few stages of. TSW just so it doesn't irritate the face. Just make sure you really wash this really, really well. Otherwise, um, like it's a sponge. It can um, get moldy if you don't wash it well, if you don't dry it well. So just make sure you do that. In order to set the face, um, I use, um, I don't know if it's an Australian brand, but I use the Australian uh, Australis Fresh and Flawless Press Powder. And so you can use, um, I know that Mac Studio Fix powder is just as, if not even better, just because it's a little bit more expensive and a little bit more high end. This one you can just get from the drugstore. Um, a little bit better than this, but this one works really, really well as well, just because um, it adds a little bit more of a coverage to the face without looking a little bit like without looking cakey at all. And so um, I use that, and um, just because I don't. Before, I used to have a little bit of redness on my face, but now um, I don't. I have a little bit of redness on my cheeks, but nothing to be worried about, really, because it just looks like a looks like I'm blushing. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that one works really well. Um, but if you if you don't want to use a setting powder um, mm. and add a little bit more of a coverage, then what I recommend you to do is get. A green base concealer. I've never used a green base concealer before. I know that Clinique does one. I know that LA Girl Pro, LA Girl Pro Conceal does one, and um, that apparently it's meant to hide the redness really, really well. I've never, I've never tried it, but um, please let me know um, if it worked for you. Um, so maybe next time, if I do have redness in my face, and maybe I can try it out or whatever. But um, yeah, if you want to have a look at other reviews, and um, I'm sure that YouTube has a billion YouTube videos on it.